Today I'm going to tell you what I think are the best places to live in the United States in 2023. Everyone's got that bucket list of places they'd love to live or travel to, things like that. I travel, I study this stuff, I dream about living in different places. It's kind of my thing, it's what I do. I also like to tell people my name's Benjamin Dover, but then I tell them they can call me Ben for short. Today we're looking at places I would live in 2023. We won't be looking at any specific stat or category. This is just a video about my opinion. And I'm also gonna tell you why I would live there. It might include a stat or something, but I'm not following one stat. These aren't ranking them by the lowest cost of living or the highest cost of living, anything like that. These are just the places I'd love to live in 2023. Got it? Get it? Good. Let's take a look. Number 10, Aspen, Colorado. Aspen, Colorado has been on my bucket list since I was like 13 and I first saw the place. Aspen is beautiful. Aspen is exciting and it is expensive, like crazy expensive. If you don't make at least $250,000 a year, forget living here. If you make less than that and you want to live here, you're going to be living in a van down by the river as the old saying goes. And yes, they do have a river. They've got a river and a small lake there. It's surrounded by mountains and some of the best skiing in the country. Aspen has next to no crime. Their crime rate's like 25% below the national average. So they're doing great there. Their schools are excellent. They've got plenty of things to do. They just have one of the highest costs of living in the country, along with some of the most ridiculous real estate prices. If you find a condo that is under $1 million, it's like a unicorn. If it does exist, nobody really believes it. There's townhomes here that are going for $3 million and they have one bedroom. Sure, you're like 50 feet from the ski slopes, but it's expensive. There's a home there that's for sale right now for $45 million. Being that expensive, I'm surprised there's 7,000 people that can actually call this place home. That's their population, 7,000. And one of them is named Tori. That's it, one name, and he's their mayor. But yeah, if I could afford Aspen, I'd definitely move there. Number nine, Fayetteville, Arkansas. Now, I'm sure a lot of you just gasped. Here's why I think Fayetteville is a great place to live. It's still relatively affordable, cost living, housing still pretty low. And this part of Arkansas, like I've said before, is not like the rest of Arkansas. And the reason I would move here, it's a good investment. It's not gonna stay cheap forever. They're starting to build more and more million dollar homes in Fayetteville. Now, a few years back, they might have had a handful, but now they're starting to be built. This is just gonna raise the property values of all the other homes in Fayetteville. This part of Arkansas doesn't get horrible weather. It's beautiful. They have jobs. The economy's doing really good in this area. Just don't go to Little Rock for any reason whatsoever. Now, is Fayetteville perfect? No, it's got some crime. It still has some unemployment and some poverty like every place. This is definitely not a playground for the rich like Aspen is, but it is a place that has a lot of potential. And in the next handful of years, I think if I were to move there or if anyone was to move there, the property values will go up and the place will get nicer. But their cost of living is pretty low, their schools are decent, and their housing is decent too. They also got the University of Arkansas right there in town, so you can go see some Razorback games. Fayetteville, Arkansas is part of a whole metro area that includes Springdale and Rogers. There's about 526,000 people living in this area, so it's not a small town in Arkansas. Number eight, St. George, Utah. St. George, Utah is in the southern section of Utah, not too far from the Nevada border. There aren't a lot of desert towns that I would move to, but I would move to St. George. It's safe, it's reasonable when it comes to real estate. Their cost of living is also reasonable. They have great hiking, outdoor activities, and they've got a handful of really nice golf courses in and around St. George. You're also less than an hour from Mesquite, Nevada, and they've got some casinos there, so that's your thing. And if you wanna to go to Vegas, that's less than two hours away also. So you could live a very quiet life in St. George and head right over the border for a little excitement in Nevada. You also got Zion National Park, which is right there. So yeah, St. George is probably the only desert town I would move to. Number seven, Monterey, California. Monterey is a great city. It's beautiful, tons of things to do. You're far enough away from San Francisco where you don't get any of that stink on you and you're far enough north of Los Angeles where you don't have to worry about that. You're right on the coast. It's beautiful. It's foggy. I lived there from 1985 to 1990. Well, just outside of town, but 
in the area. It's a little expensive there, but still. It's also a great place if you're a veteran. They've got plenty of facilities for you since Fort Ord used to be right there, just outside of Monterey. The entire Monterey Bay, though, is just beautiful. I'd move back there in a heartbeat. Number six, La Jolla, California. Yep, heading down the coast of La Jolla. La Jolla is part of the San Diego metro area. You never heard of it? It's uh, where a lot of the wealthy people live. It's right there on the coast. Beautiful place to live. I used to do comedy down there at the La Jolla Comedy Store. This is how insane it is when you're a stand-up comedian. I would drive two hours down to San Diego, get on stage for 15 minutes, get off stage, grab something to eat, and drive two hours home. And I wasn't the only freak doing this. There was a lot of comedians doing the same stuff. How it is when you're a struggling comedian. But La Jolla is one of the best places to live in Southern California, especially in the San Diego metro area. Their cost of living is just insane, and their housing is even more insane. But that's usually the case when it's a really nice place to live with really low crime, which they don't have any crime. It's actually 25% lower than the national average. The Vatican doesn't even have a crime rate that low. Number five, Bellevue, Washington. Bellevue, Washington is in the Seattle metro area. And right away, if you don't know where it is, you're going to think that's bad. Well, it is just east of downtown Seattle. But good news for Bellevue, there's a lake between Bellevue and all the drama and all the nonsense that goes on in Seattle. Nothing keeps the criminal element out of your town better than a lake with only two bridges. Right in the middle of that lake is Mercer Island, and that's where you live if you have a title that includes letters like CEO. The late Paul Allen, who's a co-founder of Microsoft, he lived there. Steve Miller from the Steve Miller Band lived there. One of the CEOs of Ford and a bunch of professional athletes. But yeah, Bellevue is a really, really nice town to live in, and I've looked at it several times. I like it up here in the Pacific Northwest, and I've actually given some thought to Bellevue, even though it's out of my budget. Mercer Island is definitely out of my budget. Number four, Rockport, Maine. Rockport is a beautiful coastal town in Maine. Now, it's one of many beautiful coastal towns in Maine. The place is just silly with them. I'm sure you could find some, especially if you live there and you know where they are, but if you're just showing up as a tourist or just checking out Maine, it's hard to find any bad towns in Maine, especially on the coast. Rockport is about an hour and a half up the coast from Portland. The harbor is what's really great about this place. It looks like someone painted it most of the time. Rockport doesn't have as many things as, let's say, Bar Harbor or obviously Portland, but it is a great place to live. It is beautiful here. If you want to live in a town that looks like it could be the backdrop of, of like a romantic comedy, this is the place to live. They only have about 3,300 residents, too, and it's spread out. They're not like right up on top of each other. Like all good places, though, it's a little expensive. Their cost of living is like 50% above the national average average and their housing is pretty decent. I mean, they have homes there that are going for 500,000. Now, to some of you, that seems like a lot of money, but this is a really nice New England town, so it's going to be expensive. So compared to other really nice New England towns, this one's affordable. Compared to Strawberry Patch, Arkansas, yeah, it's expensive. Number three, Honesdale, Pennsylvania. I've talked about Honesdale many times. In my opinion, I think Overall and all around, Honesdale is probably the best town to move to in the United States. It's rural, the land is affordable, the people are decent, the cost of living is low, they have great health care in town, water everywhere, hunting, fishing, hiking, camping, drinking, they got quite a few breweries in the area, plenty of things to check out if you're into history, including Hotel Wayne, which if you ever get a chance, stay there, it's supposed to be haunted. I've stayed there three times, I haven't seen any scary stuff yet, but it's pretty cool. If you get a chance, if you want to check out Honesdale, go during the Roots and Rhythm Festival they have every summer. It's usually in the middle of June. It's definitely a good time. Also, while you're there, definitely hike Irving Cliff. This is a cliff that's outside of town, overlooks town actually. Well, it's named after Washington Irving. Apparently, he used to like to take his lunch up there and overlook the town, have a little lunch. If you don't know who Washington Irving is, Sorry, but he's the guy that wrote like Rip Van Winkle and The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, among other things. And he used to spend a lot of time in Honesdale. Number two, Bluffton, South Carolina. Bluffton, South Carolina is in what they call the low country. 
It is just inland from Hilton Head, South Carolina, just north of Savannah, Georgia. It's right over the border. This is another town that looks like it could be the backdrop of a romantic movie. You know, like the movies we used to get back in the day with Sandra Bullock or Julia Roberts. You know, there's some woman escaping a bad relationship and they could never love again. But they move to a small southern town and some dude works on their car and he looks like an underwear model and they fall in love. That type of movie. That could happen in Bluffton. It's honestly like this small small town, but it's really not a small town. It's got a population of almost 30,000 residents and it's surrounded by some pretty good sized places like Savannah and Hilton Heads. Got a lot of people there too. So it's almost like part of a metro area, but it's really not. Bluffton's like one of the only southern towns I would want to move to. You know, I like Savannah, great. Charleston's another great one. There's some places in West Virginia I wouldn't mind moving to, but on my top 10 list, Bluffton's definitely the only southern town I would move to. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget we have another channel called On This Day. There's a link down below. There's also a link for Home and Money, which is a website you can go to. And if you're thinking about moving anywhere in the United States, they could help you find a local real estate agent for wherever you're moving to. They've got a whole bunch of other things to help you buy a home also on their website. So check them out. All right, on to number one. And number one, Cannon Beach, Oregon. Yep, right down the road from me is Cannon Beach, and I would love to move there. I'd really love to move there, so my wife would quit hassling me about wanting to move there. But really, I'm in love with the entire Oregon coast. It's beautiful. Sure, it's not like the coast I grew up on. I was born and raised a couple blocks or a couple miles, depending on what year it was, from the Pacific Ocean in Redondo Beach, California. Sure, Oregon touches the Pacific Ocean, but this is two different worlds when it comes to beaches. One, you need suntan lotion, and the other one, you need a good thick jacket. But the beauty of the Oregon coast is immeasurable. It's hard to compare it to any other coast, maybe Maine, but I still think the Oregon coast is better. If you look at the small towns along the coast, Maine probably beats out Oregon. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they do. But just the land touching the ocean here in Oregon is one of the best things you'll ever see. If I ever win the lottery and you're looking for me, just about any day you could find me walking up and down the coast around Cannon Beach. I promise you. How strange is that? I mean, I grew up dreaming about moving to Las Vegas and hanging out in the casinos and partying all night. Now I dream about just walking up and down the coast of the Pacific Ocean. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. This is a little bit different than what we normally do. It's just my opinion. I do hope you guys enjoyed it. Everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other.